Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear brothers and sisters. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you again to today's daily Ramadan uh, daily Q&A show with the online masjid brought to you by Islam 21C. I'm your host, I'll be your host today, uh, Salman Butt. And uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, any questions whatsoever uh, about uh, Ramadan, it could be about fasting, it could be about anything you want, inshallah, uh, let us know in the comment section below. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this on Facebook, you can let it know. I'll be checking myself, inshallah, and putting them to the Sheikh. And also, if you have a question which may be a bit sensitive, you can email it to us at uh, dailyqa at islam21c.com. That's dailyqa at islam21c.com. Somebody will be checking that mailbox as well. Speaking of the Sheikh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our Sheikh uh, Wasim Kemsen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa Sheikh. I don't know if. Uh, I've been frozen or the Sheikh's been frozen. <laughs> Can you hear me? Salams. Yes, yes Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you Sheikh? Yeah, very well. Jazakallah khairan barakallah how's, uh, how's the lockdown going for you? Uh, lockdown is, uh, is good. It's good. Yeah. It's not far off norm actually, to be honest with me. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. How about yeah. Ramadan? Yeah, Ramadan's going good. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's, hard to get a, it's hard to get a good steak during lockdown. On top of that, it's Ramadan as well. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, won't, I mentioned the supermarket. I actually, I literally walked past <laughs> one. And I, yeah, mashallah. Uh, after Ramadan, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, normally we uh, we, we we get our sheikh to um, give us a brief reminder. So, uh, if you if you uh, you know have anything to tell the brothers and sisters there mm. while they send in their questions, inshallah. <clears throat> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise belongs to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his father and messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم So um, I guess now uh, all of us are used to the fast uh, we're in day number five, uh, coming to the end of day number five here in the UK and if you haven't uh, already realized that the days are passing very very quickly uh, if you look back and start thinking about the beginning of the lockdown we had here in the UK, uh, you're going back six, seven weeks ago and how t- quickly that time has has passed. And before you know it, we'll be thinking about, you know, preparing for the last 10 days of Ramadan. And then there will be uh, lots of questions about where or how are we going to pray Salat al-Eid and how is that going to happen? Mm-hmm. So I guess uh, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, you know, comes to mind. Uh, that there are two blessings which people are they fall short of and are deceived by and they are as-sahatu, but as your health and al-faraq and free time and I guess in this unprecedented time no one has had free time like they have now so it is uh, an amazing opportunity for us to I guess uh, reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many different ways um, you know, if, if, it, if it's your thing and it should be really, uh, if it's not, is to go to the Quran as read as much Quran as you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't restrict only that to that. You know, I can't read the Quran and I can't do anything else in Ramadan, but maybe you, you can get involved in some form of charity uh, that you give a little bit each day. You know, these are the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those which are done, uh, you know, consistently in Qal, and even if they are very small actions. So it's about, you know, taking each day. And trying to maximize and doing as much as you can get those Ramadan planners out. Uh, I don't think you've we've had a, uh, a time like this where we have time mm-hmm. to fill out and take time. So to keep on top of ourselves. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us qubul, accept from what we're doing and make it easy for us. Ooh, I mean, I mean, I mean, Barak Sheikh. On the topic of uh, small regular deeds, you know, it reminds mm-hmm. me of um so many things like what it in life not just a badder but you know uh saving money revision you know mm-hmm. learning something a friend of mine he said once that uh, i was contemplating doing a course a uh, part-time course you know and uh he was thinking then you know it's going to be hard two nights a week i'm going to have to do xyz and yeah. it's three years long and then he said you know what that was three years ago <laughs> 
and the it's time's already passed. <laughs> it's true. Wow. So, yeah. so he said, you know, Alhamdulillah, I've made the decision. It's just a little decision would go for it or not. And, yeah. you know, the time's passed. So when you commit to something small but regular, it's yeah. really powerful. It can yield uh, amazing, uh, amazing yes, fruits, Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, jump into questions. We've got some good questions coming through. Um, right. Uh, we'll start off with an easy one for you, Sheikh, inshallah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> before the for the controversy, it's a home away question, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I postpone Taraweeh until the last third of the night? So Taraweeh, if you want to maybe um, describe how how it can be performed at home, inshallah, that would sure. be that would yeah. be good as well, inshallah. Sure. Yeah. So um, <coughs> essentially, the the night prayer is offered after Salat al Isha, and you have until Salat al Fajr to to offer that. Um, bearing in mind here in the UK that the nights are quite short. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like some other countries where, you know, you might have uh, eight or nine hours in the evening and you can plan maybe pray some early and then you want to pray a little bit later. Uh, it's really up to you, bearing in mind that we've got about five, five or six hours, uh, maybe seven hours at the moment to, mm -hmm. to, you know, to establish a night prayer. If you want to pray Taraweeh a little bit early in the night, that's fine. If you want to delay it to the last third of the night, uh, you have that freedom to do that as well. Okay. Now. Is it more rewardable or less rewardable or the same? Yeah, so the night is uh, split into three. And uh, as we know in the well-known hadith that the Prophet ﷺ informed us that Allah Jalla wa'ala descends to the last third, uh, to the last of the heavens and the last third of the night. And uh, Allah Jalla wa'ala calls to his servants who is asking for forgiveness that I will forgive them and who is asking for guidance I will give to them who is asking me so I can give to them. So no doubt there is uh, a blessing which is in the last third of the night that you don't find in the earlier part. So the latter part of the night is, yes, more virtuous. Yeah. Allahu okay. Zakla khair, Sheikh. We have another question. Uh, this is one actually um, uh, came from yesterday. Somebody was asking, can I do i'tikaf at home? Yeah, so uh, with regards to i'tikaf, bearing in mind, of course, the, the masajid are, are closed. Mm -hmm. And if it was somebody's normal practice uh, to perform it uh, if something else prevents you from doing that, then anta ala niyitik, then you will be what you intended. And Allah Jalla will reward you for that, but it's in Allah Ta'ala. However, the i'tikaf is, according to the vast majority of the ulama, is only in the home, both for men and women. So it's only in the masjid, did you say? Or the home? Uh, sorry, my apologies. So the i'tikaf is only permissible in the masjid. Did I say home? Mm -hmm. Apologies. Yeah, I meant the masjid. Mm -hmm. I'tikaf is only permissible in the masjid. Uh, and that's for both uh, men and women. But like I say, if it was your normal practice, don't think that you're going to miss out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your intention, what you were uh, you were going to do. And of course, about, uh, based upon the hadith that the Prophet Sassim, that the person is rewarded uh, upon what they used to do if something prevents them from doing that. Na Na Allah Yeah, subhanAllah. Um, it's very powerful and comforting just to know that uh, if, if it, something is your, your regular practice, uh, you know, you shouldn't become depressed and, and upset that you can't do it if, you know, you're intending the reward and inshallah the reward, uh, subhanAllah, Allah will still reward you. Zakla Allah khair. Um, good question here. It's from uh, Ray. Uh, is somebody, if somebody is exempt from fasting because of a chronic illness or something like that, um, and if they're not able to make up for it on a later date, do they make some kind of financial um, uh, compensation for that? Can yeah. you explain please? Yeah, so with regards to illness, those who have a permanent <clears throat> chronic, chronic illness and they're unable to fast and for the you know, it's a permanent situation with them, then uh, it is upon them to feed a poor person for each of the days that they don't fast. Uh, that can be done at the beginning of the month, it can be done at the end of the month. Um, mm -hmm. And that's uh, nisf sa, that's like a, about one and a half kilos of staple food for that poor person. If you can't do that here in the UK, then you can pay uh, or give the money to a charity uh, so that that food can be uh, given to uh, the fuqara and the masakin, the poor and destitute in another country. Uh, mm -hmm. That's if you have a permanent situation. If it's a temporary situation, you can't fast now, but I can fast in maybe a month's time or two months time. Then there's nothing upon you. There's no fidya. There's no, you don't pay anything. You just simply mm -hmm. make those days up in the future, inshallah ta'ala. Especially when the uh, the... The days get shorter, inshallah. Yeah, definitely. Might be something is, uh, to aim for. Definitely, the, yeah. the winter is the uh, is a good time yeah. to make up lots of days, inshallah. Yeah, zakla uh, khair, Okay, we have another. We've got an interesting one. It's uh, pandemic related. So, uh, 
this uh, brother or sister didn't have a name here. It says, um, because someone, uh, if they follow the advice of the Prophet وسلم, and during a pandemic or a plague and they stay uh, where they are, they don't uh, leave their house, for example, um, does leaving the house during the pandemic diminish the reward of that person? Because um, the, the reward the Prophet وسلم, said is similar to that of a shaheed, of a martyr. Yeah. Yeah. So, does leaving the, the house re reduce or diminish your reward, basically? Okay, sure. There's a couple of issues here. The first one is that is determining or is this uh, pandemic, does it come under a plague or not? Mm -hmm. uh, there's some discussion uh, with the ulama concerning this. Uh, there is one view is that uh, by analogy, it can be considered as, as a plague. Um, however, some other ulama, they say it's not quite reached the, the, the level of a plague because we know that the Prophet Sallallahu told us in sound a hadith that the plague would not be able to enter into Mecca and Medina and seeing that this particular virus has entered into Al Medina and Mecca as well there are many cases there then it, it's not the plague uh, I'm not here to you know say uh, absolutely one opinion is correct over the other but these are some of the discussions uh, that the ulama have, have mentioned on that now on the premise that you know let's can say you know the ulama say yes it is the plague and it is right to mention that staying in your home uh, out of uh, the fear of spreading or catching, mm -hmm. uh, if it's necessary necessary for you to go out to, to feed your family, uh, for you to buy essentials, then, uh, you know, the, inshallah, this won't diminish uh, what is, is mentioned in the hadith, uh, you know, because if you remain in your home, what will happen? I mean, if you run out of food and you run out of uh, provisions and whatnot, then you know, who knows what is going to happen? But yeah. it's all kind of, it's kind of in line with the guidance that is given to us that you know you really shouldn't leave mm. unless there is a need to do so. And if that if you follow that advice, then inshallah ta'ala you can come under the hadith if it is considered a plague. Allah wa'ala. Inshallah. Zakla khair Sheikh. Mm. Uh, we have uh, Zam uh, Zam McQuinney uh, says uh, on Facebook, uh, Assalamu alaikum. It's difficult for me to wear hijab, but I do so during the month of Ramadan. Is there any dua or advice? I'm tired of not covering my hair, but I pray and fast, alhamdulillah. So, when a person feels that there's a responsibility in front of them, and they feel some burden uh, on themselves, they feel something within their heart that they want to do that. Mm. I, mean, this is, I would say, ذَلِكَ السَّرِيحُ الْإِيمَانِ This is this is iman within you, wanting to do that. This mm. is your faith and your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wanting to uh, fulfill this obligation. So the fact that you know that you can do it in the month of Ramadan, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept and bless you in this blessed month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. That don't allow uh, the good actions, uh, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us in the Quran, that just like the the woman who is spindling up the you know, all the work that you have done, don't kind of like undo it uh, after mm -hmm. you achieved so much. So the fact now that you know in your home, or if you happen to happen to go out during the month of Ramadan. Use this as a kind of uh, a training uh, for mm -hmm. you. There's not many people out because maybe you feel there's there's reasons why you're not wearing it. There's too many people watching me, looking at me. I feel I feel you know uh, been inhibited about wearing the hijab. Well, at the moment there isn't too many people out. Use this as an opportunity to uh, you know strengthen yourself uh, about wearing the hijab, and I'm sure that you'll be able to overcome that. May Allah Azza uh, give you the strength of iman to continue. I mean, I mean, it's always good to hear those types of questions. It shows that people are, you know, that that, that struggle they experience is, inshallah, uh, beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and Allah has made it easy for us, you know, not many people outside and everyone's covering their face as well. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, I was going to mention the niqab, but yeah. maybe that's a little bit down the line. <laughs> uh, we have another uh, question on YouTube now. This is from someone called Pray to Paradise. Pray for Paradise, or rather. Um, if I wake up two minutes after Fajr has entered without eating or drinking anything, but I have a bottle of water I intended to drink next to me, can I drink it? Or must I follow the calendar very strictly? Sure. So um, there's two parts to this answer. There's a personal kind of experience, mm -hmm. and the, which is in line with the Islamic answer. The Islamic answer quite simply is that once the time has come in, uh, you can't eat or drink anything even though you woke up late um, you're not permitted to drink or eat mm -hmm. anything and i remember uh gosh maybe 20 years ago i i ate something and i didn't have any suhoor in the month of ramadan 
and uh, I missed suhoor. Mm. And even before I went to sleep, I was really thirsty. So mm. I woke up absolutely parched. So I actually went to one of my, uh, when I was studying to my, one of my friends and I said, listen, this is the situation. Can I, uh, can I do something about this? <laughs> he said, you're going to have to pursue with it. But, you know, if during the day, give me some kind of little tips that you feel particularly thirsty. He said, yeah. you know, you can make wudu, run, rinse your mouth out, have a cool shower. If you feel yeah. thirsty, maybe take a nap for half an hour, which can quite easily lead into a cup of what? Be careful, we don't sleep the whole day. <laughs> but also, uh, the Prophet said that lissa imi farhatan. That mm. the fasting person has two happinesses. In the fitrihi, we in the liqa'i rabbihi. That when he breaks his fast and when he meets his Lord. You can be assured, inshallah ta'ala, that if you happen to be particularly thirsty that day, or if it's today, you will have the best glass of water you've had in your life, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanallah, <laughs> <laughs> no. mashallah. Uh, just to touch on something you mentioned there. So uh, a lot of people do have a nap uh, during the day, especially on the mm. day off, or people work from home. Um, what, what's what's the ruling on that? Should you try and avoid sleeping or does it not matter yeah. or if your intention is to stay sure. awake longer during the <clears throat> night, for example? Mm. Yeah, so mashallah, it's, I guess uh, well, sleeping the whole day is not is not really practical. It's not it's not a good mm. idea. You want to know that and feel that you are fasting. But taking like what is known as a, a siesta, or uh, qaylul mm. in Arabic, after between dhuhr and asr, doesn't have to be between dhuhr and asr, but uh, it depends on the schedule of your day. But if you want to take a little rest in the day, that allows you to stay awake in the night time. That's your intention behind that. And then you're rewarded for that sleep, subhanAllah. So there is a, there's no problem in you doing that, inshallah ta'ala. No. Okay, Zakla uh, We have a question via email. And just a reminder, brothers and sisters, the email address to send any questions is dailyqa at islam21c.com. And also we have people, and myself as well, we're checking the comments under YouTube and Facebook. So send any questions there as well. Uh, the question is from a brother. I won't mention his name. Uh, he says, I'm uh, living in Canada with my family, a wife and a kid. Uh, I owe a debt of $6,000 to my bank and I'm really having a hard time to pay it off. The amount piled up during uh, the last three years. I never thought it would go up so fast. Uh, it's really hard to make any uh, my payments, especially uh, with the current context. What do you suggest me to do? Do you have tips um, for me to, or, or do you know anyone who can help me clear my debt? I made a promise to Allah that I will never go back to the situation in my life. So yeah, am I? So, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I might add to that, some people might uh, um, uh, also ask something similar to that and that is taking one loan to another loan to pay off other debts. So, you know, you have these kind of um, schemes for people who are struggling with debt and part of the, the, the stuff that they, I'm sure you, you've see, seen this you know, on TV and stuff, um, they, they suggest you get uh, another loan which is a lower interest rate that uh, mm. allows you to pay off uh, those loans. So that is one of the things that people are advised. Islamically, where do we where do we stand with that kind of? So what kind of advice do we give brothers and sisters like this? Yeah. So um, first and foremost, uh, I may ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make it easy for you. Uh, mm. The dune or, or debts are one of the biggest uh, kind of stresses that a person could, can have owing money to people. Um, I know uh, you mentioned you're from Canada. But um, it might be worth contacting uh, your bank or the one who's loaned you the money to explain to them your your current uh, financial situation and and say that it's kind of escalating and it's increasing mm. uh, beyond uh, your ability to pay that off. So the, as you're paying it off, it's getting more and more and more. It's ballooning, as it were. So if you can say to them, is it possible just to set up a kind of a payment plan which allows you to see... Uh, some light at the end of the tunnel and at least here in the UK uh, some banks do have some you know specific agreements with certain people that they'll allow you I mean, they cut they cut the interest uh, rate for example for that individual it's not across the board but certain individuals just so that they don't become kind of uh, swamped by the uh, the, uh, the debt mm. so speak to that particular uh, bank and see if you can have an arrangement with them that allows you to have some form of uh, plan to rid yourself of that particular debt. That's the first thing I'd say. Secondly, is um, you know, of course, make dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, you know, a, a prophet Ali Sussam entered the masjid on one occasion and saw a companion, and saw that he was. It was between salah, and he said, "The messenger says, why are you sitting here?'" He said, "You know, uh, that my, dain, my uh, debts have, have overcome me." 
so the Prophet Azam taught him a dua, and if you go to the Hassan al-Muslim, the fortress of the Muslim, you'll see the uh, duas for the uh, paying off of debts. Uh, there's, there's quite a few in there, inshallah, actually. So if you go to that fortress of the Muslim, and you repeat these duas, and you know, as Allah tells us, that uh, whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah Jalla wa ala will make a way out for them and provide for them from where they did not know. So taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extremely important. Okay, making dua to Allah Jalla wa ala to help you get rid of these debts. And, you know, subhanAllah, uh, you'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you. And make things easy for you, but you must not lose despair, not lose your hope, and be in a state of mm -hmm. despair. Uh, that's very important. So as long as you do your best, inshallah ta'ala, in speaking to the one who's lent you the money, uh, so that you can have some form of plan, uh, and do what is necessary in, in taking the necessary means, having trust in Allah Azrael, I'm sure that you'll pay off bi'ithin ayat ta'ala. Yeah, I mean, may Allah make it easy for him. Uh, we have another question. This is from my brother Ibrahim. Uh, he said, would a woman who prays Fajr by herself get the same reward uh, mentioned in the hadith that promises the reward of Hajj and Umrah if one uh, prays with the Jama'ah and sits and makes dhikr until sunrise? Now, this hadith is, is founded in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad and however, uh, the ulama have mukhtalif in all uh, the, the debate whether it's uh, acceptable or not with mm -hmm. regards to authenticity. So some of the ulama have rendered the hadith live. As for those who have uh, rendered it to be sahih or hasan, uh, acceptable, then it is the jama'ah which is established in, in the masjid uh, and not mm -hmm. in the home. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is missed. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Uh, we have another question. This one's from YouTube. It's from uh, Brother Mahmoud. He says, is there any difference in the reward for the shaheed who dies from the pandemic and the shaheed who dies from uh, in battle, basically? Yeah. Uh, so the Prophet والسلام, and likewise the Quran in various uh, places tells us about the uh, reward of the uh, shaheed, uh, the martyr on the battlefield who mm -hmm. dies for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet والسلام, also included a number of uh, situations that in which if a person dies in, they are also called a shaheed. So the person who maybe dies of drowning or who dies of a stomach disease or pleurisy, which is a kind of a lung disease, mm -hmm. um, and also a ta'un of the plague and things like that. There's a uh, hadith. And a woman in childbirth, I think. A woman well. in childbirth, yeah, there's a number yeah. of, yes, you're right. Yeah. There's a hadith yeah. mentions a number of situations, yes, for the sisters mm -hmm. as well, of course. Um, now, with regards to dunyawi or uh, worldly rulings, mm -hmm. then they differ. The one who dies on the battlefield, i.e., the one who dies on the battlefield is uh, is not washed, is not uh, shrouded, and they're buried where they are. As for the one who dies of, of the diseases or the situations I mentioned previously, then they are uh, washed and they're shrouded and they're prayed over, okay, and, and they're buried. Mm -hmm. So with regards to worldly issues, there's a slight difference. In the Akhirah, then inshallah ta'ala, uh, the status of the one who is in the battlefield, there is a hadith which mentions specifically the reward that they will get, which is over and above uh, others, because the martyrs, they are not the same level in the mm. hereafter. But nonetheless, if somebody gets the reward, or is, is uh, he receives the reward of a martyr, a martyr, mm -hmm. then no doubt they're saved from many trials, like the trials of, of the grave, and will receive a beautiful reward in the hereafter. But the very highest level of the shaheed is the one who dies on the battlefield. Now. Okay. Uh, we have another question here. This is from Sarah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Women who have many months of fasting to catch up on because of pregnancy and breastfeeding uh, from several children, catching up these fasts is quite difficult. Uh, can women pay fidya for missed fasts? Right. So, if the sister, may Allah make it easy for her, if she has mm -hmm. the, the ability to fast, then uh, those fasts remain in her account. Mm -hmm. So sometimes sisters over a period of, you know, uh, years, they might have, you know, go through giving birth and then nursing yeah. their child and then go becoming pregnant again and then giving birth and then nursing again. There's a bit of a cycle and sometimes that can last, you know, for three, two, three, four, five years, depending on the amount mm -hmm. of children that they have. It kind of adds up. So every, yeah, every it year it might, does. might yeah, be yeah. a bit and daunting. Yeah, it can be. But mm -hmm. 
um, you, you have a valid excuse not for fasting those because of the situation that you are in. Mm-hmm. But that being the case, those days still still do remain in your account. Uh, just paying a fidya off and not fasting them is, is not an option. But you would have to, you know, to, to slowly but surely uh, fast them. And as you mentioned earlier, that in the winter time, the days are very, very short, especially in November, December, January, mm. somewhat in February as well. You know, you may be fasting maybe eight or nine hours a day. It's just sort of made up really quickly. Delaying lunch, basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much that. Yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah. So uh, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember that you're fulfilling one of the pillars of Islam. It's not a small thing. It's one of the things that, you know, det- you know defines us as Muslims. Yes. So uh, it's a good opportunity for you, you know, to do that in the winter. Excellent. Zakla khair. Allah make it easy for her and all the sisters amen. Uh, watching amen. Uh, in a similar position. Uh, I know my my wife is in a similar position as well. Alhamdulillah. But uh, you know, she has a uh, she has this uh, habit of maybe just kind of when the days are short, she tries to make make use of that amen. time and make it easy. Amen. Uh, amen. They say the the uh, the winter is the spring of the believer, right? Yes, the that's right. Because nights are long for right. Qiyam al-Layl and the that's days right. are short. Uh, speaking yeah. of Qiyam al-Layl, I was wondering if you had some advice on um, uh, to, to advise people how to go about praying um, uh, Taraweeh at home. We had a few mm. questions about this yesterday. We weren't able to yeah. answer this. But sure. I mean, if someone hasn't got that much Qur'an memorized, can they use short surahs? Yeah. Or? yeah. yeah. So um, just a little while ago, I was having a discussion with, discussion with somebody and I said, I asked that person, have you memorized like from Surah Al-Ma'un to the end, which is the last eight chapters of the Quran, from Surah Al-Ma'un, until the end. And then after that, you have eight chapters. And they said, yeah, well, I have, yes. So I said, even if, you, and these are very short surahs, if you were able to pray one mm-hmm. of these chapters and each of the rak'at, you will have offered eight rak'at as the Prophet ﷺ used to do in Ramadan. And then all you have to do after that, inshallah ta'ala, is to pray with three rak'at, if you want to recite, uh, you know, three very short chapters, then you have prayed ihda asharat rakah. You have prayed uh, eleven rakat, just as the Prophet Sallallahu did. So, Some of us put a lot of pressure on ourselves that I have to, you know, recite from, you know, al fatiha to an nas through the whole, you know, uh, the whole of Ramadan. If you can do that, alhamdulillah, fabiha wa ni'ma. But if you can't, don't overly put pressure on yourself that you end up doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, sometimes mm-hmm. there's a middle ground. So just do whatever you can. And, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem. It's your word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is generous, is merciful, and knows your situation in detail better than yourself. So all you need to do is your very best, inshallah ta'ala. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's quite an uh, important lesson just generally for life. You know, if you can't, yeah. if you can't do something uh, to the, to, you know, in a perfect way, don't yeah. just leave it. You, know? exactly. you can try and don't let uh, perfection be the enemy of good. Yes, yes. <laughs> Some yes. people say. Yes, um, yes. I'm afraid that's all uh, all the time we have uh, uh, for today's show. Zakla khair, yeah. Sheikh, for, uh, for so giving up your time. And yeah. Zakla khair, and brothers and sisters, uh, for tuning in and sending your questions. Uh, we'll be here, inshallah, the same time, same place uh, tomorrow. Uh, we want to keep these short and snappy so we can spend this time uh, just before the, uh, you know, between us and Maghrib for people to engage uh, in themselves in dhikr and um, use it in a beneficial way, inshallah. Um, so please do, uh, um, you know, stay tuned to the online masjid. Uh, we'll be um, releasing some uh, tasters this week for different programs coming up. Uh, and check out online masjid.islam21c. Dot com. That's online masjid.islam21c.com. Uh, for now, I've been your host, uh, Salman Bhatt. Uh, thank you very much again to our Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Wasim Kemsen. And uh, see you all tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m., YouTube and Facebook. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.